Hello everyone, this is lesson three of unit two. Um, here we're talking about electric fields. Just two examples to go through here. Uh, so here's example one. Uh, we have a point P located 14.7 centimeters north of a central charge, Q. Uh, we know the electric field P is 6.28 times 10 to the 5 newtons per coulomb south. So we need to determine, uh, first of all, the actual charge Q, and secondly, whether it's positive or negative. So first things to, to think about then, um, we're told that the direction of the field at this position is south. So if I was to draw a field line, it would look like this. Now, hopefully you can recall if I draw field lines from all directions in like this, like this, oops, that's not a very good one, like all these field lines coming in, hopefully you can see that as by convention, this would imply that the charge here is negative. So in other words, field lines, at, by convention, field lines go from positive to negative. So field lines would go from a positive to a negative. And so this must be going towards a negative. So I've already determined that this is a negative charge, has to be. Next thing is to figure out the value. Well, we, we've we seen from our data sheets and possibly as we've been going through the course, we know that there are a couple of different ways of writing electric fields. This is why it might be a bit confusing. Uh, if you look at your data sheet, you'll see that you can have these different uh, values for electric field we have. Here we go, electric field to be voltage over distance. And we also have electric field to be, what is it? Force over charge. So which one to use? This is the question. Um, well, in a previous video and also in class, I would have derived some of these for us. So I'm not gonna do that now. It's up to you to figure this out in your questions, but hopefully you can see the clue is the divided by r squared. This is a three-dimensional system. This is a three-dimensional system. You have to imagine this little sphere in the middle. These field lines are going to be coming in from all directions in three dimensions. And as you move away from the source of the charge, the field lines are going to drop off in an inverse square manner. In other words, the electric field is going to be proportional. Let me change that. Just get rid of this. I'm going to say the, inverse, uh, the electric field is proportional to 1 over r squared. It's an inverse square law. And so that's going to dial us in, hopefully, to this guy here, this inverse square function. These two, these other two here, um, these are when we get really, really close to the surface of a sphere and or we are between parallel plates. So these ones would be for a uniform, the uniform electric field. This one that right now that we need to use, this blue one that I've circled is an inverse square law. So that's what we need to use. Well, let's go ahead and do that. Um, we are gonna take our known values. What have we got? We've got an electric field value, which we're given. So the electric field value is 6.28 times 10 to the 5 newtons per coulomb. Here's another clue, just uh, just as, as, as an aside. Newtons per coulomb, well, take a look at one of our equations. What do we, what do we, uh, what unit do we use for force? Well, newtons. What unit do we use for charge? Oh, coulombs. So there we go. Uh, another thing to think about. But, of course, this would be the same for the other two as well. It's just a, a universal um, unit. We could equally have called it voltage over distance. Doesn't really matter for now. Um, anyway, we know this and we know our equation. We know that it's going to be Coulomb's constant multiplied by the charge that's creating the field. So that's probably worth just mentioning. This is creating the field. Okay, it's not in the field, it's creating the field and that's key because we're not using P in this question is a hypothetical point in space. There's no way to, we're just sort of, a, we're testing it. That's what it is. It's like a test spot. Uh, P doesn't have a charge. We're just testing the field. So Q is referring to 
whatever is making the charge or whatever is creating it, which, which is the what we're trying to find out. And then, of course, R squared, that is center to center. So just, again, worth rem remembering uh, some of the limitations of Coulomb's law. It's only valid from center to center. And that's a little bit of a clue there as to why we need to use these other formulas because of course as you get closer and closer to the surface of the sphere stops being you can't you can stop modeling it as a point charge and you have to start thinking about it as a uniform charge anyway let's go ahead and assume that this is far enough away to be modeled as a point charge which means we can use off our inverse square law let's keep going um what are we going to do here we know we know r that's uh, 14 decimal seven centimeters so I can say that this value of 6.28 times 10 to the 5 is equal to Coulomb's constant, which uh, we should have pretty well memorized by now. It's on a data sheet, if not, over 0, 1. I'm going to make sure I put this in meters. Oops, 0 decimal 1 for 7. That's our 14 centimeters. Now, don't forget to square. So uh, quite a few people do forget to square this, so don't forget that. And you end up with a Q, once you solve for Q, you get 1.51 to three significant digits microcoulombs. Okay, so that's the charge uh, produced by the green sphere in the question. And the direction of the field is south, which means it must be a negative charge. Okay, so question, uh, example two is uh, an electron that's being placed into an electric field. Now, we don't know much about this electric field. I don't know whether this is an inverse square field or um, a uniform field. All I know is the value. But it doesn't really matter because what we're asked to find is the acceleration. And uh, the reason it doesn't matter is because... Um, oh, my pen's turned off. There we go. The reason it doesn't matter is because the location with which the electron has been placed, we know the field about this exact position. Now, if the electron moved over here, the field strength may or may not be different. I don't know. This might be an inverse square field. It might be a, a uniform field. I don't know. But it doesn't matter because all I'm asked to do is to find its acceleration. And I'm going to have to assume that this is an instantaneous acceleration. So the acceleration that we're finding is instantaneous. In other words, the acceleration that this electron is going to feel may change. Of course, by the time it gets to, if it gets to position x and the field is different, then the acceleration will be different too. But that's not what we're asking. We're, we're just finding this instantaneous acceleration at this exact location, given the value in the question. And we need to know magnitude and direction. So let's think about it. Uh, again, convention tells us that field lines go from positive to negative. So if these arrows represent the field, then they must be coming from a positive. And we know that an electron is negatively charged. So which way is it going to feel the force? Or which way is it going to experience a force? Well, it's going to experience a force this way. This would be the force electric. It's going to try and, and find those positive charges. That's the, the nature of charge. And since the force is that way, that must mean the acceleration is that way too. So I've already figured out the direction. The direction of the, of the acceleration must be west. It's going to be heading in this direction, west. All right, how do we find out the actual acceleration now? Well, we've placed a, a charge in a field and we know the value of that field. Let's go ahead and write that value down. So I know that the electric field at this position is 6.50 times 10 to the 5 newtons per coulomb. And remember, what do I have at my disposal? I could use, uh, oops, kq over r squared. Actually, I'm just going to just redo the q, put it as a capital Q. So I could go kq over r squared, remembering that this q produces produces the field. So the question is, does is, is this field, are these field lines produced by the electron? Well, no, they're not. So that should tell you that we're not going to use this formula. Other formulas to use, well, we know that the uniform field can be 
um, can be force over charge and or voltage over distance between the plates. Well, I don't know the voltages or the distance and it doesn't look like there's even parallel plates here, so I'm not gonna use this bit. Almost certainly gonna be using this. In fact, you might wanna get used to writing this out. The force electric of an object placed into a field is EQ, okay? Right, now I'm gonna think about this as, uh, as a dynamic system, okay? So if I think about my F net expression, Okay, F net, of course, is the sum of all forces. In this case, there's only one force. Okay, the force is electric. Is there gravity? Well, <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to ignore it. Okay, there would be force of gravity down, but for an electron, you could, you could go ahead and put it into your equations, but it's going to give you literally nothing. It's such an insignificant force, um, I'm not going to use it. Is there wind, uh, air, air drag? Well, maybe if this is not in a vacuum, it doesn't say if it's in a vacuum. I'm gonna ignore that. I'm only gonna focus on the force electric. And so that's the only force available. Okay, so that, that force electric is gonna become EQ, because I just figured that out from down here. And then I have to think about the, <coughs> the, the force on this object. Are the, are the forces balanced? Is there a force opposing it equal and opposite? Well, no, it's an unbalanced force. So the F net's gonna be non-zero, which means I'm gonna have mass times acceleration. Okay, so mass times acceleration means that I can, I should put that on there. I can now go EQ divided by the mass, and that's gonna give me my acceleration. So if we go ahead and plug that in, one decimal one four, I believe you're gonna get on your calculator times 10 to the 17 meters per second squared. And remember, I've got to put my direction on here as well. It's going to be going west. Okay, so that's your acceleration. 